Sunny Bonani, everybody, hello. <laughs> From both of us. We will leave the other languages, the many of South Africa, for other meetings with you, which I hope will be many. Uh, it's, well, it's fantastic to be here with you guys. Um, first of all, thanks to Schoolnet, to the university, and to the sponsors of the conference. It's a big opportunity for us. It's, nah, it's more of an enjoyment really. But the thanks go to you guys for coming here today, for making the way to Bluefontein, and to being here with us today. Um, well, first of all, thanks also for the people who were at our workshop yesterday, which we really enjoyed, and a lot of you did a fantastic job. Well, actually, all of you, and, and many of you I can see in the audience, which is fantastic to see you again. And I hope you enjoyed it yesterday. You have kind of a little bit of an advantage over the others. You're kind of our insiders in the audience. So please don't feel that this is redundant because we're going to take you on the right anyway. You have to buckle up a little bit because we have Prezi for this. So there will be a lot of zooming in and out, so please don't get seasick. Uh, we, we're not insured or anything, so please bear with us. So, um, why are we here today? Well, together, this is kind of the key word, and sharing is the key word for today, for our talk, which is all about teachers, their practice, and that on a local and global level, and how to connect that. Now, we're talking about the OER movement, which is something that some of you now have heard about. We are going to explain what this ominous OER means in a second, so don't worry if you don't know that yet. Um, it's all about changing teaching practice in the 21st century, in the modern age, everywhere around the world. So that's basically what we're talking about. Basically, the first question we have for you is like, if you, I mean, you've probably been asked that in many conferences, many talks, why have you become teachers? And I mean, there should surely be a lot of different answers, but what we kind of see around the world, in every country, there's people who say, we wanted to do it for the sharing, sharing of knowledge, I wanted to become an expert in my subject, I wanted the students to surpass me, to take that knowledge, that fascination for the subject, and to basically take it and become the next practitioners of the future. Basically, yeah, their potential is unlimited if the teachers enable them. Teachers themselves have an unlimited potential as well, which is absolutely fantastic. We are thinking that spreading knowledge around the world is a thing that is possible today in a way that we've never seen before. We all know that, but sometimes people actually share a specific passion wherever they are. And that can be the inspiration for a movement. A movement that has the same values, that independent of culture, and that doesn't mean that culture isn't relevant to the country, but independent of culture, they come together to share their cultural perspectives on teaching, on practice, on what students need, and what we should do to make students learn what they should learn rather than what they have to learn, make them passionate about life and improving their livelihoods, and that's kind of why the Open Educational Resource Movement uh, has come together. So this is the OER movement. Mark is going to introduce that in a little bit more detail. What does it actually mean? Hello? So many of you might be familiar with the OER movement, but for those who aren't, it comes down to ER, which isn't to do with hospitals or George Clooney or anything. It's to do with educational resources. And these come in a range of different forms, from text and lesson plans, audio, video, photograph games, demonstrations, and it's from teachers and to teachers from all over the world. These can be individual resources or even in structured courses. And these resources can be used in the classroom and outside it as well. It can be used in the classroom with blended learning models such as the flipped classroom where the students can watch the video outside the classroom, then come inside the classroom and then socially collaborate around the subject, giving a better understanding, peer-to-peer -peer learning, whilst the teacher can facilitate that learning. And the main ethos with educational resources OER is that it's open. So that means that it's free. It's free to everyone. And it also has a Creative Commons license, a license which means you can modify and adapt the resource, make it relevant to your learners, maybe in your classroom or in your community or even your country and you don't have to worry about the, the copyright license. So this is a movement that's growing, and there's many e-libraries that have uh, these resources together, including Guru, OER Commons, and Kirky. 
and Wikimedia and Nilo. And these repositories have over a million resources, which is fantastic. But it's not just about the consumers and the businesses only, it's about the creators. It's about you guys, the teachers, who can create these resources and share your passion with the rest of the world. I know that everybody in the room probably may have engaged with an e-friend in another country back in the day, nowadays. Maybe some of you are actually already part of the Open Education Resource Movement. It's quite a nice thing to identify with. It's nothing harmful, it's actually to the country. It's something that every teacher we've met is very passionate about. The potential of connecting some teacher in everywhere around the world, doesn't matter where, with somebody on the exact opposite of the world, be it through social media, be it through forums on which open educational resources are shared, is quite exciting. I mean, you've got, you guys have surely done that in some form or another to date, but it can go to the next level. It can go where we improve practice together. So imagine, it's, it's, it, it doesn't matter where people are. It's about the greatest ideas, the best ideas, the good ideas that can be improved, and working collaboratively to do that. Imagine an idea um, about pedagogy or about classroom management. You can make learning more engaging, more fun by drawing in different examples or by creating some that inspire others. There's many more applications of this OER movement of open educational resources. You can really think of anything that touches your practice that students do as well and try to spread that around the world. Nowadays it's possible. So imagine an idea from South Africa reaches everybody in the country instead of just in the school or in the district or it reaches the whole continent or even the whole world. Imagine that. And you could be those people. We've seen that yesterday already. People were creating things which looked fantastic at the workshop. Some weren't finished yet, but once they're finished, them going out, those resources, that would be fantastic. A lot of people were sitting there yesterday creating their first educational video, which is nearly the highest end of like complexity. But you can do that with text, as Malik said, you can do that with audio podcasts, you can do it with pictures that you have taken, share those. You can do anything, it's about the sharing aspect. And um, how that is going to be done, we will tell you a little bit more about in a second. Now all this is uh, for improvement, right? I mean, a lot of people want to improve, most of you probably want to improve their teaching practice, but also help others. It's, it's realizing that the potential lies within us to always uh, bring our ideas to the open, only then we often say that if a tree falls in a forest but nobody's there, has it really fallen? I think it's the same thing with ideas if they're not shared. So once they go out there on a global scale, we can really connect uh, the potential of the teaching world and make the teaching force one. This open educational resource movement is real, it's becoming an umbrella, it's being used by millions now around the world, and we hope that everybody in South Africa starts becoming part of this. How did it start? I mean, how did this whole thing come about? Yes, we know e-friendships were there in the past, but how did it come to this movement? Well, actually, it's kind of because of a demand-driven basis. It was based on higher education and people in developing countries and emerging economies wanting to access higher education, not primary and secondary necessarily, but higher education, and um, but nobody was sharing their resources. All the universities were being proprietary, all the materials, the research shared, they were all closed down. It's like a box of knowledge is fantastic, a stash of intellectual gold, but nobody ever opened that trunk, that treasure trunk. But making that available was something that a lot of people thought was possible through the internet. So lecturers and teachers around the world started to think, well, now is the time. Now is the time to share ideas, peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, and spread it around the world. Some people had to pioneer, of course, so for, for the students to access that, wherever they are. We had the universities of uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the MIT, which you may know, Harvard University following in the wake, Princeton University, then the Open University, and also the African Virtual University. Now in South Africa, several universities are also part of this movement for higher education. Why did they do that? Well, perhaps one started and then there was a peer pressure, you know, one, one had a passion, wanted to do something special, and then there was a peer pressure. If they do it, we will lose track with being the best university if we don't share our resources openly as well. So universities are putting their courses out there online for free. Not all of them, but they are following the way. They put it on portals, like the Virtual African University, and then it all becomes open education resources.
Higher education was the blueprint, the blueprint for secondary education and primary education, and that's surely what you care most about today. Uh, yeah, to follow in that wake and to do the same or even better, and now it's getting there. So, because the teaching force for primary and secondary is much larger still than higher education, of course we have much more potential in quantity and quality, and this has come to a real practice around primary and secondary becoming part of the open educational resource movement. Coursera provides free access to world-class education offered by the top universities. Renowned university professors are working with Coursera to make high-quality courses in a wide range of disciplines available to people all around the world. Tacon Academy. It's a non-profit with a simple but audacious mission to provide a free world-class education for anyone, anywhere. So if we get rid of the percent sign, we move the decimal over. He's amassed a library of math lectures. 12 plus 4 is 16. Starting with basic addition and building all the way through advanced calculus. We're taking the limit as delta x approaches zero, the exact same thing. When Khan finishes the lecture, he uploads it to his website, where it joins the more than 3,000 other lessons he's done. In just a couple of years, he's gone from having a few hundred pupils to more than four million every month. See, Avula is a social enterprise focused on the effective integration of technology into education. We have built a platform, an open source platform, we have taken resources that are available online, like the Khan Academy, the FET simulations, and embedded rich media in these resources online and in print. A printed textbook on a learner's desk is exactly the same as the textbook that can be found online and on a mobile phone. The mobile front end that has been developed focuses on low-end phones, given that this is what the majority of South Africans have access to. A solution that provides broadcast video, embedded video, simulations, presentations, and mobile access for all learners in South Africa. So, so the big idea, and I guess it is a big idea, um, is we're looking to digitize the whole of the secondary school education system, the course subjects of math, the sciences, and, and English, uh, into a range of uh, bite-sized videos, um, available free of charge through YouTube, but also available in a structured format through, through our platform, through Fuse. The same content being used by the kids at the best private schools in this country is exactly the same learning experience as a kid on a, on a smartphone is going to be using in a developing country in any place in the world. We actually came up with a radically new production process, um, which is around interviewing the, the, the top teachers, finding the top teachers, the best explanations, capturing their audio, and then visualizing their audio. Udacity is a digital university. Our team comes from all around the United States and all over the world. And although our backgrounds are diverse, we share a passion for making great education available to everyone in the world for free. Right now, somewhere out there, there's an educator delivering a mind-altering lesson to their class. I want to engage your brains in this. Try to get my head around how vast our Earth is. But that lesson only reaches the students in that room. What would happen? capture that lesson. This is a toothed wheel. What if pro animators and visualization artists could bring that lesson to life? It's an object we see every day that would literally fit one million Earths. That's the central mission of TED Ed, to capture and to amplify the voice of the world's greatest teachers. It does this in 1849. And it's the crazy possibilities, the unanswered questions that pull us forward. So stay curious. So just a little bit of an overview with some videos here. Um, so the idea is that this is happening around the world. In South Africa it's happening as well, it's all see of Ula, but we've also got Mindset South Africa with the great education videos that are free to everybody. We've got Bradbin with this new device, Freedom Toaster, which you may have heard about, where everybody can download resources here in South Africa. And that doesn't have to be the only thing that one wants to connect to as a teacher from here. You can connect globally to those e-libraries that we're going to talk about in a little bit. You can connect to us, you can connect to the South African Initiative, or you can create your own, be it local, regional, countrywide, pan-African, or even worldwide. It, it just has to start with something bottom-up. It's always bottom-up. We started the same. This is just the idea. So, yeah, basically, these organizations, this is just a fraction of the OER movement, and What's fantastic about the OER movement is there is no competition because everyone has the same goal to democratize learning, to reach as many learners as possible and give education to everyone. So these different organizations give different resources. So we have text, 
audio, video, interactive games, open source tools. I'd like you to imagine a world with books and authors, but with no librarians. And it's pretty chaotic. So whilst these organisations create the resources, we also need these e-librarians to make it more structured. And that's where the e-librarians come in, get this content and make it more structured for you, the teachers, to then get the relevant learning materials for your lesson. And so increasingly, there's been a lot of organisations and individuals who take these open educational resources and then translate them for their community. Yeah, we, 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 we kind of burned out there on translating that to South African because we just want to make sure, so we put it to German, from English to German, which is not necessarily the best example, but this is happening everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we had 12 South African languages to choose from, but we thought, let's play safe with the German and we will be okay. <laughs> But for OER to reach its true potential, we need not just adaptation, but for the teachers in the different communities and the different countries to take ownership and create it for their community and beyond. OER is about diversity. So what might suit one learner in one country might not necessarily suit the learner in another country. So together we can move forward. And we can remove these barriers that we have. We can have South Africans who inspire Europeans, Asians who inspire Australians, and the other way around. This is a global movement and we're in it together. So you might ask, how does the OER movement work? So we have these larger organisations, or large COGS, but it doesn't work without these smaller COGS, the idea generators. And the idea generators are you, the teachers. You, the teachers, need to be able to create your own resources because that's where it comes from, that's where the learning happens. And so basically what we're trying to say is without you, OER is nothing. Openness also enables participation. At the moment, we are consumers of knowledge from developed countries. But as I mentioned, networked societies are more participatory. And those conventional north-south relationships can be replaced with new kinds of relationships. A look at Wikipedia, which is the sixth most popular website in the world, shows that we are already participating in putting our content and our information online. We should all be creating open resources. Every single one of us here, every single one of us listening has something to contribute. I'm going to teach you some tips on how to improve your listening skills. If I were to heart the last atom of gold, it would no longer be gold. So we have a formula to work out the area of a circle, okay? That's simply pi r squared. The Cartesian plane has an x and y axis. An ordered pair is made up of an x and y value and can be plotted using the axes. I was about to, I was looking for a book and I could not find it in my entire cabin. Then I said to myself, let me go to the dance server and try and see how it's going to work. So then, the illustration which was given there was a perfect one, a very good illustration of how to explain this, uh, the equation to the kids. Yeah, and it's, it's all about becoming a champion of this movement, really. I mean, the blueprint is there. You're all sitting here, fantastic minds, ready to go, really. Yesterday we saw it, how quickly people got on it and how quickly they were creating. I'm sure we're having another workshop, so hopefully there'll be more ideas coming out of that. It's about connecting and finding a way of becoming a, a good champion for the open educational resource movement. It's about perspectives. It's about different perspectives, inspiring different people. So how do you become these champions? Well, first you have to learn which are these open repositories, those e-libraries that are out there. Have a look at what's out there. Be inspired by, by the different media types, by the different perspectives on lessons that others have put out there. Maybe you already have this, this drive to, to make your own. That should be the thing, right? That's what you're passionate about, creating things yourself. You can think about how to do that with your students. It's a lot about teachers, but it's not only about teachers. Imagine creating a video together with your students. A lot of students are very gifted with technology, artistically as well, and very fascinated by movies. But what if together with the teacher, there became a narrator, a narrator who 
it tells a story about the local community, what to improve in the local community, or what to do about a specific lesson, how to go about it. Perhaps just explaining a concept and then bringing visuals from the learner together with the narrative from the teacher, or even the other way around, or both from the, from the student. Open education resources don't only have to come from the teacher. Becoming a good creator means understanding what tools are out there. Tools are things like Google Earth, uh, that are free for a geography teacher to use in, in their classroom. That's an open educational resource as well. It's not only consumable things, but it's all interactive as well. So try and, and implement that and make your own solutions. That's what we want to encourage. The idea is that, you know, some, and when you go home, you'll think, well, a lot of teachers, they don't necessarily have the ICT literacy. They're not so familiar with those creation tools yet. There is a lot of stuff out there to teach them. You can also teach them as kind of the champions. But more than that, it's not only about those people who are very proficient, it's about the great ideas who can come from anyone, independent of if they can use a computer, a tablet, a mobile phone. It can be simply them putting together a narrative, and they can perfectly, perfectly do that without having used ICT ever in their life. Maybe they have the best narrative on something. And then for an ICT proficient person in the school or in the region to collect those resources and to collectively pu publish them under Creative Commons uh, license, which is very simple by just copying and pasting that into the resource and, um, and just making it uh, freely accessible. It's just about knowing where to go on the web. We will definitely make a lot of information available um, through the workshops as well as afterwards. We come to how to communicate that to you at the end. So the whole idea, as you could see, is the South African teacher, however proficient, can come to this movement and kind of provide their ideas with this amplifier. It's like a relay race. Whoever helps the other may have different abilities, and you can combine those to become stronger. So let's see who passes on what to, to whom, and it will be very interesting to see what comes out from the people at this conference. I will be very interested in following that. So from the school level, that can spread to the whole country. And then it can, again, follow up. You have to, to see what kind of connections you want to make. But I hope that people try to even do that without being dependent too much on language. There's Google Translate for translations. So in case people want to understand what others have said in their resources, it doesn't be just because a South American teacher uh, had written something in Spanish doesn't necessarily mean that we can't even access that. There's a lot of things to do. There's a lot of ways of innovating nowadays. Technology is helping us with that as well. So the world is at your feet, I hope. There's a girl in the ocean, which is a bit strange, but um, <laughs> she's there because in the end, uh, she's swimming there with her ideas because in the end, these open education resources should impact the learner, not only when they co-create stuff with you, but also if they are the next big genius or just good for their community, if they want to improve their livelihoods in their community. What, what open educational resources means and this movement is making great lessons accessible around the world, be it from you to the outward or from the outward towards you. And the thing is, inspiration, I think we all agree on that, I hope that inspiration is what makes the great minds flourish and the good minds have a sustainable life. It's about them being able to be inspired about the topic. And if you don't have to generate everything on your own, if you draw in everything together and share, start at the school level, you know, start at the school level, and then go, go bigger then it becomes something that can inspire learners to be, become those people who perhaps solve the, the big problems of the world that we face as humankind in the future. So it's all about them really, isn't it, in the end? After all, we're nearly coming to an end. Um, if you want to follow what we are doing, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is kind of our main presence currently. But what we really want to engage with for you is in this conversation, as Shafika introduced earlier, um, and it's about using hashtags in Twitter. So the hashtag SchoolNet SA, a lot of you have already seen, but what you maybe didn't know is that the OER movement is just using the hashtag, hashtag OER to communicate with each other, and you'll see how quick you, quickly you can connect with teachers around the world, with us as well, but a lot of people that I don't even know about. There's, there's literally hundreds of thousands out there who are doing this, and you can definitely become part of this. Yeah, for now, I think that's it from us. I hope you, you, you're interested in becoming part of this. As we say, it's all for a social good, and that's what we're all in for, I think. Uh, thanks for watching, listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye.